Of course, guys, the laptops are awesome for the portability, but on your working station at home, it's not always possible to plug in a ton of accessories. And here we have a dock station for your computer, both for Windows and Mac machines, by cable time and with an SSD compartment. And also we'll have a look at this pretty cool gun charger for four USB ports. Let's go. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. So we'll start off with this gun charging brick. And it's not a gun because it's a gun like a pistol, but it's the technology of charging, the gun charging. And it has 100 watts of capacity if you use a single USB Type-C, for example, port. You have three USB Type-C ports and one USB Type-A port. And here you can see the wattages of those ports if you use not one, but for example two or three or even four simultaneously. It's a great device if you want to strip down your charging station, for example. You can plug it in during the night, for example, and have your camera, your batteries, your I don't know, laptop charged with this gun charger. But keep in mind that the more you plug in, the lower the wattage you'll get. But all in all, super lightweight, 220 grams, really fascinating gun charger for the travel, like for the trips, for vacations, love it, highly recommend it. The price is around 60 bucks, but Cable Time does have on the website occasionally some discounts, so keep an eye on the website. But the most interesting device on today's review is the 16-in-1 dock for your laptop by Cable Time. On the Cable Time's website you can see the compatible devices, both Windows and Mac computers. Not all the computers and laptops are supported, but most of them are. So. Right here we have the enclosure underneath this coverage, so you can plug in an M.2 SSD in here at up to 10 gigabit per second speeds, which is nice because most of my external SSDs are about 10 gigabit per second speeds, less than a gigabyte a second, let me say. So on the bottom of the device we have the vents and also the sticky feet, let me say, so the device itself is super lightweight and it's completely silent even if it's working for a very long and extended period of time. And on the front we have several ports, for example the headphones and the microphone port, also the 10 gigabit USB Type-C port, two micro SD and SD card slots, which is nice because not all the computers they do have both SD and micro SD, some Windows laptops they have only the micro SD for some reason, my MacBook Pro has the SD, my MacBook Air which I've been testing extensively with this docking station doesn't have any SD card slot. So it's a nice feature to have. Next we have the USB 3.2 10 gigabit port, which is super fast, and also two USB 3.0 ports for 5 gigabits. And on the back side we have two more USB type A ports for USB 2.0 for plugging in the accessories, for example, like a keyboard and a mouse or maybe a printer or something like that. So here we have the power port as well, so this device, this docking station can supply it up to 100 watts of power to your laptop and I do consider plugging in this docking station because it can be powered with your MacBook, for example, or with your laptop, but if you plug in a ton of different like SSDs, HDDs, you'll run out of power at some point, so I do consider plugging in a USB Type-C cable and a 100 watt power brick like this one, for example. Also we have the Ethernet port, 1 gigabit Ethernet, but for some people it is important to have an Ethernet port, and we have four display ports, I mean one display port and three HDMI ports. One of those can support 4K60, the others support 4K30, but you can plug in like 1080p displays if you work with text or something like this, no issues whatsoever. And of course guys, I'll write down all of the specs of all different ports for you to understand it in a better way. And on the bottom right part of the side we have the host 1 and the host 2 USB Type-C ports. If you plug in your host 2 USB Type-C port to your computer with the included cable, Type-C to Type-C, you'll have almost all the capabilities except for one external display. But if you plug in a dual cable, which is also supplied in the kit, and the dual cable works perfectly fine with MacBooks for MacBook Pro and for MacBook Air, fits perfectly and you'll be able to have better speeds as well as the support of an extra external display but some MacBooks are limited with external displays for example my MacBook uh, Air M2 only supports one external display the M1 Pro supports up to two if I'm not mistaken or maybe three and the M1 Max version or M3, M4, whatever, they support a bit more. So you gotta check your display support of the computer first and then of the docking station itself. 
all in all, a pretty good variety of ports. And I did plug in a ton of different accessories like four SSDs, HDDs, um, let me say my printer, my audio interface, SSD, whatever. <laughs> Almost every single port was working simultaneously with a single USB-C connection as well as with a dual USB-C cable which is pretty nice because you can work almost flawlessly with dual cable and with single cable if your laptop only does have one USB-C port, for example. So all in all, a pretty good value. And let me say that the SSD enclosure, which is in here built in, is a nice touch because if you want to buy a separate SSD enclosure, here we can see a Sabrent USB 3.2 and we have the 10 gigabit per second speeds in here and it's about $30. Whereas the whole docking station by cable time is $128. So minus $30 for the enclosure and you get less than $100 for the docking station with 16 different ports. Now that's a little crazy to me, but a super nice deal. And you can buy a separate SSD, for example, this crucial four terabytes SSD with pretty good speeds. You can buy a slower SSD for cheaper and you'll get your docking station with the included four terabyte SSD. Why not? So all in all, guys, I'm really satisfied with this product. Now let's have a look at the comparison of the speeds with my Anchor Thunderbolt 3 um, dock which only has three Thunderbolt 3 ports for the out, as well as one USB type A 10 gigabit out port as well. So here we can see my Samsung T7 SSD via Anchor Thunderbolt port. And for the right, we have 742 and for the read 639, which is not bad. It's plenty for the video editing even in 4K60. So here we have the same SSD, but via the cable time USB 3.2, USB-A 10 gigabit port and as you can tell guys we have almost exactly the same numbers in terms of the write and like 40 megabits a second less in terms of the read which is not affecting anything basically. So right here we have the USB type A 3.0 port with 5 gigabit per second speeds and of course it will be around two times slower which is <laughs> logical because you have 5 gigabit versus 10 gigabit. And also here we have the dual connection to my MacBook Air with the USB Type-C 10 gig port and we have 760 and 432 for the write and read. And if we plug in with a single cable, we have slightly lower numbers in terms of the write 548, but the read speed is almost exactly the same 432. So all in all, you'll be more than fine with both um, ways of connecting this device to your computer. Dual USB-C is definitely the way to go if you have a MacBook, but with a single USB-C cable, you'll still have plenty of speed for 4K video editing, even at 60 frames per second. So all in all, guys, I'm really satisfied with this device. I can highly recommend it. I'll leave a link below to the cable time website. And if you have any further questions, guys, feel free to ask them down below. And if you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. And right here, I'll leave the next video for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.